Hey everybody, I'm Simon Harris and welcome to the latest episode of the vlog. So, as you can probably tell by the tan, I've been on holiday in the US for about a week and a half and tons and tons and tons has happened in the world of ad tech uh, whilst I've been on vacation. So, as I and many others predicted, uh, AT&T bought the uh, venerable independent ad tech company that is at Nexus. Um, it's been massive news actually from IPG Media Brands as well. They have acquired Axiom's uh, marketing services business for $2.3 billion in cash. Uh, so that's huge news as well. And Google decided to ditch the venerable uh, DoubleClick brand, uh, which has been a cornerstone of digital marketing since 1996. Um, so I want to talk about that as well. But first, I think that the IPG and Axiom news is probably the biggest, certainly the most unexpected. So I want to look at that now. Okay, so the Axiom uh, acquisition by IPG was really, really unexpected. Uh, I didn't see it coming. I don't think too many industry commentators did either. So fair play to uh, IPG for keeping that one under wraps. Um, should say at this point, actually, IPG have not acquired uh, the whole of Axiom's business. They've acquired um, their Axiom's marketing solutions business, uh, which makes up around 75% of Axiom's revenue. And their marketing solutions business is focused on uh, collection, storage, and segmentation of user data. Uh, all said, I believe they have around 2 billion uh, user profiles globally. So I guess in that context, you can kind of look at it as IPG paying like a dollar for, for every single user profile that they've, um, they've bought. But I think it's a really interesting move, right? Um, I'm on the record as saying that I believe data businesses will be really challenged, especially in Europe at the moment and the current kind of legislative context. Um, I believe that that kind of same, similar sort of legislation uh, may happen in the US. So I think, you know, all data businesses, Axiom included, are potentially in for a bit of a rocky time. So that could make it... Um, you know, a tricky acquisition for IPG, but, um, you know, if they manage to kind of skirt those issues and um, I think they'll be left with um, some really interesting assets. So firstly, the 1600 analysts that um, come on board with the acquisition who have, um, you know, very, very deep expertise in data management and um, using data for, to build predictive models. Um, it gives IPG Media Brands access to a, you know, a two billion user profile uh, data set on which they can, um, can train AI if, if they wish to do that. Certainly I can see that that'll be an area that um, holding companies kind of step into, obviously have the bigger and broader uh, the data set the better there. Um, so I think if they can weather the storm of kind of legislation, I think it could be a really uh, interesting acquisition for them. Lots of people have, have commented that, um, you know, Axiom have kept uh, live ramp and um, I think they're listing on the, the stock exchange now as ramp, I think it is, and, and they've spun off the marketing solutions business because of the legislative risk. I'm not sure about that. You'd have to ask someone at the business there. But I think for IPG, if they can weather that legislative storm, I think it's a, a reasonable acquisition for them. So the IPG Axiom acquisition um, was seemingly a very well kept secret within the industry. Uh, the next story, not so much. So. Um, Google have decided to sunset um, the DoubleClick brand, which is really sad news if you think about it. DoubleClick has uh, been around since 1996. Um, it was obviously um, acquired by Google at the kind of turn of the century for around $3 billion. I think it was 3.1 something in, in that kind of region. And Google have decided that it is time to, to kind of uh, retire the DoubleClick brand. So, um, you know, farewell, you've been, uh, good to us all I suppose. Um, what's really interesting about this is in the short term I think very little is going to change right. Um, I think Google are on the record as saying the products aren't going to change too much so the functionality of um, DBM, the functionality of DCM will remain the same but you know 
DBM now will be called Google Display and Video, so um, which I'm sure people will shorten down to GDV, for example. So another catchy three-letter acronym for everyone to learn. Um, I think in the long term, though, this really speaks to Google's ambitions around um, moving into the uh, Martech sector and um, building out a stack potentially to compete with the Adobe's and Oracle's. I guess Salesforce is an extension of that of the world. So having these kind of having like an end-to-end -end Google stack um, and telling a consistent story across all of their products, rather than having some stuff named Double Click, some stuff named Google. Um, so telling a consistent story. Um, I think from a business perspective, that makes a lot of sense for Google. Actually, um, the the growth area for them must be marketing technology now, because if you think about it, in the ad tech world, they're kind of you know they've kind of won. Um, they have, you know, probably 90% uh, market share of, um, you know, uh, the kind of advertiser side ad servers, 95% from what I hear of publisher side ad servers, um, you know, they, you know, their buying platform accounts for 60% uh, plus market share in the UK, you know, you hear it's even higher than that in Southern Europe. So I guess they'll be looking at, you know, where they can grow next and obviously having an aligned uh, marketing stack makes sense for them because they're not going to grow anymore in the, the ad tech space. Um, so the rebrand is actually happening at the moment. Um, I think everyone's had notifications in their platforms now around that um, and we expect the, the new kind of branding to roll out in July. I think it will be some time before the actual real changes um, are seen. I think people have been speculating as to, you know, the cup, what the coming together of DBM and DCM into, you know, this kind of new Google stack will mean from like a contracts and a commercial perspective. Feels way too soon to speculate about that at the moment, but I expect to see that on the horizon. Um, but, you know, the, the rebrand's going to happen this month. I'm actually at Google's uh, Summit in California uh, next week. So um, I'll find out more then. And um, yeah, I'll let you know uh, what I think then. And yeah, for now, just, you know, it feels like the end of an era, the kind of uh, the double click brand uh, being sunsetted. But, you know, it'll be uh, interesting to see where this kind of uh, next phase takes Google for sure. also AT&T actually did go out and buy out Nexus um, I see this acquisition working really well actually um, I don't think as I said in the last vlog where I spoke about this specifically that anyone's particularly surprised about this ultimately AT&T is a customer of at Nexus both on the buy and the sell side so they know the business really well Brian Lesser who runs AT&T's Adco um, division is also on the board of directors of at Nexus um, going way back to his days at WPP, leading uh, Zaxis. And um, yeah, I, th I think it's a, a really interesting acquisition. I don't think it'll be the last acquisition that AT&T make in this space. Um, I think what's super positive is I read an interview from Brian Lesser, which uh, talks about the plans for AT&T and AppNexus. So the plan is to bring the businesses together really quickly. So Brian was talking about a 30 to 60 day uh, time frame, um, which is obviously like super compressed, but you know, I, I'm sure they're capable of doing that. He also spoke to what the plans were for the business in general. They're planning to keep it together. They are planning to keep uh, Brian O'Kelly at the helm. So the two Brian's of Tech, the two of the kind of greatest of all times working together. Um, they plan to use AT&T's rich data assets um, through the AppNexus platform, which I think makes a lot of sense. Brian Lester sees that as a really big carrot for advertisers. I think it will be in the US. It remains to see be seen how this will pan out in Europe. Um, interestingly as well, Brian Lester talked about um, bringing AT&T's uh, data assets to the supply side as well. Um, it'll be interesting and see whether that's outside of uh, Warner Media, who obviously AT&T own as well. Um, but that could definitely be a real, really big incentive for um, for kind of uh, publishers to and kind of break that that double click hegemony that I I talked about uh, previously. Um, I think it's going to be an interesting acquisition uh, for sure. I think it's really meaningful in the US. Um, It'll be really interesting to see uh, how this pans out in Europe where um, AT&T doesn't have a kind of uh, huge footprint. Um, but it certainly makes sense and it certainly looks like a, a smart buy and, you know, a lot of time for the folk over uh, at Nexus. So I wish them kind of all well in this, this uh, exciting new chapter for them.
Okay, that's it for me for now. Don't forget, if you've enjoyed this episode of the vlog and you haven't done so already, please hit subscribe on YouTube. Um, if you disagree with anything that I've said, either on IPG, on Google, or on the AT&T App Nexus acquisition, let me know in the comments. Um, I know I say it all of the time, but one of the things that I'm sort of um, most pleased about uh, this vlog isn't um, getting in front of the camera <laughs> and talking. Frankly, that's still a little bit terrifying. It's the amount of debate that's bringing up on uh, YouTube. I think the kind of openness and differences of opinion um, is really positive. It's great to have that kind of debate out in uh, public. People always talk about the fact that ad tech's a bit cloak and dagger. It's great to see diverse opinions uh, in the public. I think it's good for the ecosystem. As I said, next week, I'm going to be over in Mountain View for the annual Google conference. Um, it's going to be really interesting to hear more about the kind of uh, the rebrand of their products. Um, if I can, if I have time whilst I'm over there, I'll try and get a vlog in. Uh, if I don't, which is looking kind of likely, I'll let you know about the, um, the experiences when I'm back in the UK and I'll look forward to seeing you in the next one.